Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to the third video of this playlist and we are talking about how to build the APIs in the Node.js. So in the first video we talked about a simple application, simple API app which talks about a simple authentication which was using MongoDB. Now we are going to add the flavor of TypeScript. So you might be already doing TypeScript with React, with Angular and now you will also get familiar with how to use TypeScript with Express app. So Express.js gives you the freedom to write code with the simple JavaScript where you are adding all the files like with the JavaScript model.user.js, index.js. Now we are going to add a TypeScript, tsconfig, TypeScript compiler, all the things which TypeScript needs and we are going to create uh, TypeScript, uh, I mean we are going to add TypeScript on top, on top of JavaScript so we also need a compiler so we are going to use a TSC compiler for it and we are going to add a tsconfig. In today's world in 2023 none of the project exists without TypeScript. I mean you have to use TypeScript either if you are writing React, Swell.js or uh, Next.js or Nest.js or Angular, Angular or React, any framework. You will end up writing TypeScript because it is making your code type safe and you are getting to know your any errors happening at the compile time only when you are writing the code you won't be any doing any mistake okay a dot b where b doesn't even exist on a so you will be creating a type uh, interface enums so we will always know that b is the property which exists on type a okay so we will open this in the terminal this is the, the monorepo setup which we have already done in the first video you can check in the playlist link and here we are going to just do a pnpm in it to just initialize our project with simple package json and then we will install all the dependencies which we need so here is our package json right and here i will just say uh, we will add some scope to it let's say tk sharma express auth have similarly i can just do express typescript apis so what is the advantage of this in the nx console the first video we talked about select workspace and i'm talking about this monorepo and here we should be able to okay it will take some time nx console when i open it again the nx console should be able to show me all the projects we have so this is the pnpm workspace this is the pnpm workspace yml all the applications and all the packages currently we don't have anything in the packages we are just adding things inside our applications so let's add all the dependencies which we need for our typescript app we are going to use mongoose and we are going to write a simple apis authentication apis where we have a database some helpers some middlewares and all because we are writing express so we what all we need we need controllers we need uh, server.ts the handler the routes and middleware if you are using something services and model layer this is pretty much the folder structure of your any of your express mvc app looks like where you have middlewares you have a controller services models and router and then uh, your root packages and all so let's start with adding the dependencies okay i will do pnpm add so we are inside the correct folder pnpm add so what all things we need we need uh, express first of all and then we will add the typings for them express body parser express body parser cookies parser to accept the cookies to accept the body there is a body parser and then cross origin resource sharing Lodash, we might use it ludash there is a typo and then mongoose these are actually core main dependencies we need to add in our project and then there will be a dev dependencies which we can add i think that these should be inside dev dependencies dependencies and then there will be a dev dependencies so what all we need to add inside dev dependencies that also we will do so to add the dev dependencies we can use this command pnpm add minus d okay let's go there and this is something done now we are going to add pnpm add pnpm add minus d and here we have some dev dependencies to be added right 
now it's all about typings so we need a node moon we need ts node we need typescript because typescript is a dev dependency we don't need it in production okay then important is types node right so all the types types for mongoose because for the typings typescript needs typings for each and every package even for express mongoose they have their own types defined inside these so we have types express types node and then let's say types uh, mongoose we already have lodash let's add them then we will add the remaining dependencies so it is adding all the dev dependencies which is getting added now we let's add the remaining so we need the types uh, body parser cookie parser and uh, okay let's add that so here we need to add types body parser okay that is correct and then types cookies or cookie parser and that's it i think these are the all the packages we are using so we got all the types for each and every package so that's good now we can start writing our code we got all the the required dependencies in our application okay this package json now inside package json we are also going to have the scripts which we need to execute so what the scripts will execute scripts we can just have a start only we can also write tests and all and it is going to use node mode what is a node mode you might have heard about it so when you change the type javascript type script code you also want to restart the server so we can create a node mode we can use the node mode and create a node mode dot json in our project so node mode dot json and this will contain only the basic configuration okay which particular folder to watch i'm going to watch src folder here is my src folder and inside that you are creating javascript type script and i'm going to execute that using ts node src index.ts i will re keep restarting the server so we are going to have index.ts in the root that will have our server configuration like how we want to start our server like what all uh, packages we need so let's say if i just do console.log hello and this is the typescript code so remember you always need ts config ts config is a typescript compiler configuration that you need to compile the typescript into javascript so what you will be doing you will be creating a dist folder because typescript whenever the typescript compiles either you talk about angular react or next js when you do the build it creates a dist folder or the build folder same thing we are going to do here so we are going to create ts config because this tsc command or ts node needs ts config file ts config dot json and here it it what it contains is it contains compiler configuration compiler options you can say and inside compiler options you will have a module and all the configuration there is a standard uh, definition of the ts config if you look into the typescript project so i'm just saying node next it will cover all the the node and module resolution which i'm setting module resolution equal to node it can be node node 16 node next okay and then base url okay what is your base url for which we i will start looking for the files base url is source okay and when it comes to out directory i mean where you want to put the once you do the build what should be the output folder in which i'm going to put the content dist and source map do you want to generate a source map when you are doing a build you can set true okay why it is complaining there is a comma missing and then any no implicit any so there are many no implicit any it's true or false that means that you cannot defer the types to no implicit any like sometimes what we do is we don't have any types so we just override that and just set any include what all you wanted to include i want to include uh, everything which is inside source folder so you can put something like this okay sorry so inside source i can have asterisk asterisk that means anything which is inside source and you can also exclude i think 
there is exclude so you can exclude the uh, dist folder you can exclude node modules and if you don't want to build the tests you can exclude that okay these are like a basic ts config file and if you want interested in looking for these you can just go here and check out the the global ts config for files what all uh, is the compiler configuration we have so you can see okay let me just go to ts config compiler options right these are compiler option allow unreachable code so if you are allowing unreachable code it will not throw any error uh, at the time of build allow unused labels uh, exact option property types no uh, no fail through cases in switch so if you are just making any uh, cases which are not reachable no implicit any so in some cases where no types annotations are present typescript will fall back that type to any so what it is saying is okay you, you are not specifying that i will not be putting unknown i will be saying okay this is of type any okay no implicit overrides so all these ts config term, these are the typescript compiler options and based on your comfort if you don't want a strict typescript checking you can you can actually override these options allow js check js the important uh, part is so like uh, these are the compiler options extends you can also extend the existing uh, other base ts config file if you already have base ts config file and yes and this is how you are including and this is how you can exclude let's say the node modules and all and this is how you can do the type checking and all so these are all available in the typescript compiler configuration okay and this is all about okay playground how you can play with the typescript typescript i think 5.x is now available that will give us and these are the typescript concepts if you want to learn about typescript then this is the best place to come and learn don't look for any other source because they really have the the best documentation on the planet about typescript there may be a thousand tutorials okay don't look at them these are the real you can say everything inside about this about the typescript like generics uh, static members how to define public private member visibility how you can extend the classes interface enums the types tuples creating the different custom types parameter properties class expressions everything is here because they are the masters and then you are using those typescript concept in the react node.js ember backbone any other framework which exists on the planet because this is the typescript and microsoft has it so that is the, the biggest advantage they have okay and now this is the ts config so if i do try to run the build npm run start so i will go to this project first cd i think we are already there in that so npm run start currently it, it is not starting anything there is only node moon command so it will start looking for these files and if i try to change this right it will keep starting this is how it is happening right this is what i want when i change the code it keeps reloading and it keeps restarting my application now i will go to my index.ts and let's start our express app so it's bare bone it's not a production ready and each and every feature rich project baseline project we are going to create whatever we need we just need to re create a simple authentication application and this is how i am getting express express instance and then i can import http from http this is the core pro core uh, library and then i can just have import body parser body parser from body parser it's auto complete so import cookie parser from cookie parser and import okay from it's not there that's fine we will write it and then we are going to create a router because we are writing express app so what happened with this okay there is no type added for this it's strange let's add the the type for it npm add minus d types so you can you can you will see from the error that what is the problem here no types are added now it has gone right because now the compiler got the the 
everything what it needs so now we will just create app instance const app equal to express and we created the express instance and then app dot use i will also start doing the registering the middleware and all i will just do this later but this is how you will register a middleware like if you already have some request response next now what typescript needs you cannot just write something like this okay it always expect that okay you need to specify the types for the request response and the next function uh, because typescript doesn't like it so what we will do is we will get the request from express is it coming we will add it request response and then there is another type we have is next function express next function i think it i should get request and response from there right so this is about adding the types now if you try to access something on the request object that is available only whatever is express is providing right this is the all options accepted app base url body all the properties which are available on the request object and here i will just do next not doing anything here this is like a simple middleware i have created okay now i will just focus on creating a http server so there are two ways you can simply do is app.lation right this is how we create this is a callback function and once the server is started console.log and here you can specify the the port i think that is the second argument process.env dot port if you look into this it takes path okay and then there is a callback function app dot listen port and this is the callback function and here we can say server is running on this particular port we are good server is running on which port do we know it if we don't know it then we'll just fall back that to 3000 let's say 2 and here also we can put it process.env.port Three thousand two, okay. Happy, happy. And now, uh, what we need to do is before even the everything is good, we will also import the mongoose, which is not there. We need to import from the top. Import mongoose because we need a database connection. So we don't need a server running without connecting to the database. Here I will add a mongoose, and then. There is a method, there is a mechanism to convert uh, convert a mongoose. Uh, so how can I do this? Mongoose dot connect. And I think this is the callback based. So here you need to pass the argument. Okay, what is the URL? Mongo process dot env dot mongo URL. Right. So what it returns? It returns the promise. Right so you can just do a dot then and try to handle this promise or we will do it in different ways so if this is a connected here we can do a dot then there are many ways of doing it either you what you can do is you can wait for the mongodb to be connected and then start the server okay if uh, there is a connection error then what you can do is you can just do catch and you can just do process dot exit we can just terminate this process because mongodb is not connected or there is a handler mongodb dot connection dot error so if you are not writing if you are converting this into the this is also fine or you can write it in the little bit different way you can convert the mong you can promiseify this mongoose library and you can just to handle it something like this you can just log this instead of terminating the process and then once everything is running i will just put this at the last app dot use because we need to register the router right we have to create a router for our application where we are going to define all the routes it's not like a single in the single file we are going to add everything const router equal to uh const router well, let's import this first at the top we are going to create a router file import router from 
will create a router folder that we are going to define all the router and here i can just do is app dot use for the forward slash this is my base path either can i can put api this is be a prefix for all the api routers and i can pass router app dot use app dot lesson that's it so this is a simple configuration we have now i will add uh, i will initiate a docker compose up to have my mongodb container up and running we will connect to the mongodb and we should be able to start something and in the router we will just put a simple route let's say hello world okay so here uh, what we did is i created a simple router index.ts this is a simple router to check my configuration is working as expected express router can be created from express router and i just created hello world and i'm returning a export default router i mean i'm just returning the router instance so we can add it here router and then i also need a dot env because this is where i can just specify my port 3002 let's say and mongodb url i already have a docker compose up running somewhere that we created in the last video docker compose up this is my docker compose yml you do docker compose up mongodb container is running on 27017 so i can specify mongo url mongodb localhost 27017 database name and this mongo url you can use in your index.ts file simply by specifying uh here in the mongo url okay and i can start i can see if it is running or not npm run start it is using node moon and i'm just printing okay what is the mongodb url from the dot env so dot env is a module which helps you to populate the env variables into process dot env if you are looking into this for the first time this is what it does we just you have you specify env in the root of the project put the variables and do the dot env config in your root index.ts file it will load all these variables in the process.env so that you can use that in your project process.env.port process.env.mongo url process.env.secret anything this is how you can get the variables and my server is running on 3002 and here i can say forward slash api and i got the hello world so what it says my apis are running right i can i'm i'm hitting this because here is my router in the router there is a forward slash now if you want to say api hello what happens i don't need to restart the server it is already happening api hello is a get request it is not found now if i do api hello it will give me hello world right this is how we define the api router path and instead of doing it like this you will create a separate files for the user authentication whatever the ent entities you are using and we will also bootstrap our models mongodb models so now what we are going to do we are going to create a two different apis one is a simple authentication and the user api okay so i mean we can use a bcrypt and just generate a json web token we can use a simple hash value and uh, can return the cookies and then we can write a middleware to validate the cookies and then can allow user to access so there is a middleware part there is some utility part to decrypt uh, to create the hash of the password middleware to validate the cookies json web token and all so all those concepts we are going to put on right so here inside router we can create uh, some folders one is a db db will contain some model so here we are going to create a users dot ts this is the model and we are going to create some helpers that will help us to decode the the password because either we can use a bcrypt or we can use a crypto library to create a hash version of the password and then we also need a middleware so here we are not using bcrypt we'll just create a use a simple crypto create the hash value and store that hash value in the password and once user will log in we will compare that hash value with the actual text password if that is correct then we will just return the cookies and then that cookies user needs to come back with to create access the apis okay so in the middleware we are going to add some stuff index.ts there is a router middleware and in the inside router we have authentication and the users router so users.ts and let's say auth.ts so index.ts so here we have two different routers okay and inside index.ts instead of doing this we will not be doing this 
so all these routers we will be putting in your in the respective folders and here we can just do export default i mean we can just create a simple function which is returning express dot router okay Th this is how we will be adding we will be adding the flavor of the typescript and here we are going to define use the router so let's import something import auth from so there we are going to create two different routers import users and then we can just simply say is users and we'll pass the router object and here we have auth and pass the router and we just need to return this router because this router is now rich with all these api routes we don't need to export default okay and then we need to create auth and the users so this auth will take care of the authentication so here again we just need to use import express from express and here i can simply say is export default simple function which is taking router object because we router we are passing and this is express dot router we are getting and what it is returning it is returning two different uh, routes router dot post we are using the same router object that is important so here i'm going to write api auth register this will be handled by register function which we will be adding that in the handler in the controller and then there is a auth login and there will be a login function and then we can import all these things import login register from so we need to go out from here because we will be creating another folder so there is a controller we can create inside src and inside controller we are going to talk about okay this is related to auth and here we can import login comma register so at least these errors will be are gone from here this is our auth similarly there is a user route so in the user we will be doing doing the same thing here instead of this there will be a users and i will be fetching get all users these are the different methods get all user delete user if you are allowed update user and then similarly we can just do here the path will be different because now user is logged in and trying to access is on resources user dot get give me all the users that is simple i think everybody can do that very quickly and very easily and here instead of this now the resource path will be give me this particular user now we need to just add some middleware here okay that i will add in the last or now i will just doing is okay this is get so we can also do a delete because you can write a simple simple api is delete and here i will be calling delete user this is to update a user and i will be calling update user that's it controller users and then we will be adding some middlewares here because this function takes uh, your path and then the second argument is all your handlers all the middlewares you wanted to add and then your actual handler where the request will be forwarded so when the request comes it will come to the middlewares and then it will goes to the actual handlers right and middlewares can be many not only single one right these are the now we will be creating controllers so what the controller contains the user.ts and auth.ts inside controllers i will create two files users.ts auth.ts currently our server is not running because we are doing lots of changes and there are some errors so inside a users first we will very focus on the auth because there there we are doing lots of things export const because we need to do a named export here login this is the function and this is the sync function this is the controller where we are doing most of the things and this is the model model we haven't discussed this is the mongodb model 
which specifies okay this is how you are going to store the data mongoose from mongoose and here we are going to define the schema because let's say in the, if we talk about the sql database there we define the table structure similarly let me just hide it it's very disturbing const user schema and here we will define okay what the user contains what the user contain collection is going to contain mongoose dot schema and the important part is these basic things i don't cover much here i'm covering because here i'm covering uh, because i wanted to create some advanced series so i just wanted to cover some basics so that we would be on the same page whatever i was talking is advanced that is understandable for each and every one so the type is string that is upper case string and then the required is true so this is how you can do the validations required true okay so all the columns uh, you can add here i'll be putting some of the things name you uh, so name instead of this there can be email and then there is a username and then there is a another attribute we have is authentication inside authentication i'm going to have a password so this is of type object okay inside the object what i'm going to have i'm going to have multiple properties let's say password the password is of type string required true and do we need to select it we don't need to select it in the queries right so select false by default when you do the find operations the password won't be there in the the response so when you do the fetch all the users you won't be fetching the password salt value we also need to store the salt value using which we will get the, the password comparison so type is string and select is false we don't need to select it and then there is a session token which we will fetch which we will store whenever you do the login and we will return it in the cookies select is false so that's it this is our authentication table now how you are going to query to the mongodb all those methods we can define here export const user model first of all we'll create a user model which is mongoose dot model and you specify your model name okay my model name is user and schema user schema okay this is your model now you can define some helper methods export const so you don't need to write that in the controllers get users how i can do it this is a function that is going to return user model dot find so it will give me all the users with the columns which i'm selecting export const get user what is the problem here host is allowed as a variable declaration name okay oh sorry what i'm doing then we can export it get user similarly get user by email all these methods which i wanted to add as a helper methods so const get user by email so what i'm doing is user dot find here i will be taking email as an input email is of type string right and then uh, we just need to pass user dot find inside this we just need to pass this where close and that is easy with the, the mongodb we just pass the email property okay then another method is get user by session token so similarly i have couple of methods i will talk about them i can quickly write them and then i will explain them it's uh, already there in some helper projects get user by session token so you can do the nested property uh, find also authentication dot session token give me the user which belongs to this session token user model dot find one get user by id create user so i already have the values i can just pass them new user model dot save dot then user to dot to object or you can make it a sync await also delete user by id find one and delete find one and update simple right these are some of the methods which we already have we just need to do await now because all of these methods if you see these all our methods are should be returning promise here i can see this is mongoose.promise okay dot find what it is returning it is returning 
I mean it should be returning a promise so you should be attaching a weight on top of that so this is our mongodb model and now we will write our controller so inside controller we have a user controller or the auth controller so we are doing a login and then similarly there is a register function and we are going to use some helpers so first of all import express from express library and here we already are using this database model right and we are going to use some helper methods which we i will be writing the first so we have helpers and then inside helpers we have index.ts so what helpers you need in this whole project so first of all i need to create the the hash value for the password so we will be passing the salt value and the password and it will give me the hex, hex, hex value so i need the crypto module for that pnpm add crypto so i will import that import crypto from and then we can have some kind of a secret that we can get from the env right i can have a password secret and that is equal to secret okay so this is the password secret we are going to use in our helper uh, where is our helper yes index so it should be ts file why i am putting js sorry for the typo okay and here i will be just okay const secret equal to process dot env dot password secret otherwise you just keep it empty and then here i can just define method export const authentication and what the authentication does is it contains two arguments salt which is of type string and the password which is of type string it will take two arguments and it is going to return the string so this is what we are writing typescript and it what it is doing is return crypto dot create there is a function i forgot that create hash create h yes this function which takes okay what is the algorithm sha256 this is the enum i guess this will allow me and then here you can pass salt i mean whatever the argument you are passing salt and password i'm passing dot join and then okay this is we are creating okay what is that here type string so here salt dot join and then we can do the dot update okay this is the update method is there and that is using secret this secret variable dot is a digest it need to create digest of hex hex digest that's it so this is giving us simple authentication and export const random i need to just generate some random session id also that i can use just a simple crypto module crypto dot random bytes of 128 characters dot to string and just convert it into base 64 that's it these are the two methods which i'm going to use in the auth controller so i will just use that uh, what is that method random and another method is authentication happens we don't need to specify ts okay the login part now inside authentication what we are going to do we are going to get the e email and the password so we are going to put a try catch boundary because we are going to do lots of stuff inside this so we should know where it is breaking and for now let's say throw error and we will define what all the possible errors we can get and here we are going to get things from the body right so we also need to register the body parser middleware so email and the password we are getting from request.body so most of the projects i write in the 
I write using nest CLs. There the process is a little different. Here we'll be using express dot request, and we have a response which is express dot response. This is how we are adding the types for each and every parameter we are passing in the function. And here we can use joy validator. This is just a simple project. So I'm just checking. Okay, email is not there or the password is not there. In that case, you can just return response dot uh, status code send status response dot send status 400 that's a bad request right because i'm expecting email and the password which you are not passing otherwise await so here we can use get user by email which we already have defined in the model and we will be passing the email and from that we can also do the select operation on that what i'm just selecting is i'm selecting only two attributes so here this is a syntax authentication dot salt and authentication dot password these are the two values i am getting i'm going to fetch because by default that is not allowed right because select is false if user is not there then what we can do is simply respond return response dot send status you can also send a message with that or unread bad request or invalid credential or whatever with the message if user is not there otherwise you will get the expected hash okay this should be the hash value because we are going to use uh, expected hash we are going to use authentication method here and we already know the user dot authentication sorry user dot authentication dot salt this is the user object which contains uh, authentication dot salt why the type is not coming okay, okay authentication is there it takes two argument user dot authentication because i want to access salt value and then the password which user is passing to create so this is my expected hash that is what i should get okay let me check what is the problem with the typings so let me check with the typing issue i just mark this as any for now so i'm passing the salt value on the password so this is my expected hash which i should receive because i already have the salt value in the database and my password because what we are doing so i will tell you what we are doing so there is a registry method so when you do the registration what we are going to do is we are going to create so there is a simple register method which will create two things for me some salt value and it is going to create a password and it is going to store both the values so salt value we can create using random function that we will store in the database and then the the hash value bcrypt hash value you need the password now what we will do is we will when we do we are doing login we will get the salt value from the password and the password value which we are getting from the body this is the text password we will use these and we will create the expected hash value which is already there in the database if both are equals that means your password is correct right so this is the the simple comparison we are doing with our uh, so here we already have a user password user dot authentication dot password if this is equal not equal equal to if this is not equal equal to the password expected hash that means return response dot send status you can send 403 or bad request anything is fine otherwise uh, if everything is good we can just generate the salt value which is random and we can store we can also put the session token because session token we need to generate which we are going to send to the client so here session token equal to authentication salt dot user dot underscore id underscore id dot to string because it's an object 
and then simply await user dot save so we are just we just did the user dot find and we also added a session token in the the database so what why we are doing it because once user do the login we also want to store the session token in the database and so on the same object we put the session token and then here response dot set cookies this method we can use response dot cookies because now we are sending the response back to the user so it's like auth cookie simply and here user dot authentication dot session token this is what we are going to send and these are the cookies properties okay what should be the domain domain is the uh, local host path is forward slash so you can also set these cookies http only so client won't be able to access them and once this is done you can just return response dot status response dot status 200 everything was good and then dot json this is the user object if you want dot and or dot send whatever you want to do so it will give me the status code and it is also sending me the auth cookies with this session token so we'll try to do the register and try to do the login system first here okay we'll copy some of the part i catch so we are doing register now so async request response and this is our try catch okay inside this what we do have is we are getting the stuff from the request body because now we are doing registration right so here in the body we are getting email password and the username and how the registration looks like if everything is being passed then we will allow user to create it so if email password and username all are being passed we are good email password and username if all are, all are these being passed so we will just check if user exist or not if there is existing user we won't allow user to create so we will just do get user by email and we'll pass the email and we will check is this user exist if this user exists we won't allow you to create if i'm just adding some just simple code here response dot status and status uh, for me it is a 409 because it's a conflict you want to create something which already exists in the database and here we'll create a salt with a random and then const user equal to await create user this method we already have create user and you are passing an object so here we have email username and authentication authentication is an object which contains uh, lots of properties so in the property we are passing salt which we already have and the password is the authentic we will use call the authentication function we will pass the salt value and the text password which you are sending so i can just create a, a hash value for it and then if it is everything is good return response dot status response dot status uh, status will be 201 created dot json user dot end you want and this is it so let's test it uh, if anything is goes wrong we'll just throw the error so save exceptions will be thrown back so it will be handled by 500 these are the specific status code we are returning return status code and all okay so we can test this thing at least because these are the controllers we are using the models helpers everything is connected here get all users okay we don't have all these functions so let's comment these out for now okay auth we have everything for this npm run start
okay something is not right can't find module db users source index.ts that we are importing in this db users okay so we need to do something like this inside users we don't have anything so i will just put the console.log i will i think this is start restarted now let's test it okay so we have written the code now let's uh, check this okay if it is working and then uh, if it is not working we will do the troubleshooting and we will try to explore how to troubleshoot because i will be doing some mistake by myself and we will be fixing them okay so this is auth register okay running 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 nothing right so let's see api auth register so here i'm calling router okay let's talk about only auth inside that we have auth register everything is good register method we can just do a console.log if it is coming here okay now i will do this again and we'll check in the terminal if anything is coming up okay man nothing is coming up so that's the problem right are we uh, passing the handlers correctly that is the first thing are these the uh, routers and handlers are connected properly if not so here this is the router and what do you see it is returning the router object so we need to call this function right then only we'll be getting it so i call this function now if i try to do this at least it is returning 500 right so i can see unable to read property and define that means whatever we are passing in the body it's not being forwarded to the controllers that is because we are not using these uh, middlewares we need to use them app dot use body parser dot json and then app dot use also cookie parser parser we are going to use uh for for the middleware so we will register the cookie parser and app dot uh oh, sorry then for now we can just leave it body parser and cookie parser let's restart the function now body parser byte is terminating can't find module cookie parser okay cookie parser we are already adding it is it uh, not there in the package json cookies parser and we are using cookie parser are these different that may be the mysterious thing cookies parser okay there are two modules that's really strange so let me see the documentation which one is which so we'll go to npm so now i will just do cookie parser so cookie parser and in the package json it should be cookie parser i will just do pnpm install so i will get the right module sometimes these mistakes can also happen right cookie parser and i will just do npm run start again and i will send the request at least i am getting hello that's a good thing 409 conflict okay that should not be possible because i haven't created this user yet but let me change this uh, email everything is a conflict again uh, another issue we need to fix router auth and we are doing register and conflict i'm sending okay that is wrong right if existing user is there then we are sending conflict so let's see what we are getting inside this console.log maybe it is coming undefined or empty object that's why it is coming every time i will hit this so it is coming as an empty array obviously get user by email right so we need to check if existing user is there and existing user dot length should be greater than zero for that okay we fixed it now i will create this user and user is created that's what i want but we are giving everything that is wrong right we are, ret we are returning the whole uh, authentication object so we need to delete the authentication object before returning the the user so while creating the user here i will just do is delete 
user dot authentication before returning the user object and i will just say demo at the gmail.com that's fine now this is still satisfactory for me what we are getting in this and now i can do the login and i will just pass email and the password okay there is an error we will fix it what is the error saying unable to read can't read properties of undefined auth.js 33 salt value it is not able to read so the user dot authentication dot salt i think because get user by email is returning it's not returning a user or object get user by email so here user dot it should be find one do we have find one it should be find one let's see if it changes something then we also need to change in the the register function so here i am just returning only a single user by email if it exists then we are just doing the select operation on that so in the authentication while doing registration also we are doing this find one so we don't need to do the length now it will fix that and here authentication dot salt okay will it give me okay that's that's good so the typing issue is also solved right authentication dot solved because earlier it was returning an array of users now it is returning a single object so we can get the authentication object from there i will do the registration first because we change the things how it works i will just say one one username one one and password one one good and i, I will do the login now post this is fine and that's it that's what i need and it's giving me the password that is uh, that is what i don't need and here you can see i should be getting the cookies set cookies this is the auth cookies i wanted right this is the auth cookies i'm getting in the response this is the important because this auth cookies i'm going to send back to the server for authentication because this is what i need and i will be just deleting this authentication dot password and the salt value i mean i can just delete this whole uh, authentication object because everything we are returning in the cookies so before returning the user object in from the login also i can just write this delete user dot authentication that will secure my stuff because we need only cookies that tells me okay you are authenticated and i will do this again is it started delete user dot authentication okay that's strange i'm deleting this uh, authentication object is it not starting or i can just set uh, simply status code email is the user dot email because whatever i'm returning from here is not useful for the user the, the, the token is the cookies which i'm returning that is useful for the user okay i can you can send a email username all, all the properties instead of deleting it we can do something like this also that is safe okay now we are going to add a middleware what that middleware will do is let's say you do the login now you did the register and you did the login and you will start accessing the protected api users api so how can we validate that you are a logged in user so inside a middleware index.ts for what we can do is we can simply write our functions export const is authenticated async and this will contain request response and next function that is coming from the express so all these things we are going to pass here and we will import express import express from express and then inside this let's put everything inside a try catch and if this condition doesn't match send unauthorized because user is not authenticated user is not passing the cookies in the 
header session token we are getting from request dot cookies so this is how we can get the cookies auth cookies i think that is the name auth cookie this cookie you need to send back to the server and this is a request not response request dot cookie cookies i'm doing some small mistakes okay and then if session token is not being passed then we are not interested in you and i will just send you back response dot status send status is the method which can do the thing send status 403 unauthorized session token now if it is being passed what we will do is const user we will just check if user is there get user by session token we are passing somebody is passing a session token if that session token user exists if the existing user exists then we are good uh, i think this should return as the object dot find one so we are good here and if user doesn't exist then the, we will do the same thing send status 403 if uh, user exists then what we can do is we can just do a return next return next means we will allow you to access things oh man return next and uh, this is uh, we can do simply so we need to i mean we can also merge something like request dot user i think we need a typings for it request dot user equal to user object because user doesn't exist on that right so what we need to do we need to create a typings for it for now let's put a request as any or can i do it something like this because it's a type script uh, request dot request any okay it won't allow me so i will just say any for now and then i will add the typings so i'm just adding a request user and then simply return next that should be the last line okay if there is a catch uh, we can just simply say status 400 or 403 whatever is suitable and uh, there can be another middleware uh, oh no i think this is fine we can also have a is on another, another middleware which will check okay are you the the really the user of this resource which you are acting on so there can be a role based authorization identity based authorization we can add on top of this so this is a simple middleware we have created we can use this middleware in our user operations so we are going to write a user controller that will have some methods get user delete user update user and uh, uh, okay we can just write it export const get all users simple function equal to async and it takes uh, parameters request and response request uh, express dot request and response that is also express dot response and then this is an arrow function and i will be writing just these route handlers and we need to just use all these import methods from the db models express is should be small what happened i always put response by request and response and then just put a try catch wrapper and inside this i will be doing some stuff for get all users so you already aware it's a simple right await get all users and we can just do return return response dot status status 200 dot json users so get all users uh, get all you get all api users let's change the method name and get all user is a function we can import get users no get all users should be there right 
I defined it. Okay, get users is fine. That is also doing the same thing. Get users of it. And if there is an error, we can send a 400. Similarly, I can define the other methods. This is get all users. So what other methods we have is delete user. So here I can just do is first I need to get the ID from the query param, query params. So we can also do the validation for that request dot param. Using that I will get the ID and here I will be calling delete user by ID and pass the ID. That's it. And then status code deleted user. Simply user is also fine. It's a single user object that you are deleting and then update user. So we have update user and update user also we are going to get the ID and let's say you are allowing only update of the username. Request.body you will define that what all properties you can update from uh, the APIs. So here update user and here you can pass update user and the body. First of all we so this is how it will work. First we need to get get user by ID. First we need to check if user exists. If user exists then only we will be doing it. Otherwise we will be sending ok user doesn't exist. If uh, username is not there, if user is not there then we can just do is return response dot uh, send status 400, 400, uh, 404 pay user not found. Right? 404 user not found right and if user is there we can say is user dot username equal to the username you are passing from the payload and finally you can just save this await user dot save that's it so this is like a simple operations we have written not a complex apis i just wanted to cover some basic aspects of uh, building express typescript apps how to add the typings how to write the controllers middlewares and services and now we can plug all these things into our uh, controller so in the router we have this express router in this router we have a user I will just comment all these things and here we have is authenticated middleware so this middleware we need right because you can access these APIs only if you are authenticated and inside that we have controllers controller user I think we already have all these methods get api users at all what happened with this controller user these are all our default imports export const get all api users why it is complaining i will go to the controllers and then there is a users what is the method then delete users update users so this is get all api users i mean there is just uh namings i need to fix delete users is only just another middleware if you want i just skip that simple right update delete and get and then this router we need to add inside this so here we can just say users and i can just pass the router users we are importing so now user api is also added in the main section so how we can access them in the same way okay there is some error let's fix that db users that's the same problem which uh, i was talking about it should be db users what's the problem db user is same i'm using it something like this somewhere let's find it okay nowhere my vs code uh, terminated let me restart okay that is in the middleware i'm importing something like this that is wrong i mean that is just a vs code stuff it is changed it like this okay now uh, we are good we have all the apis and now i can just see i can check in the insomnia 
So I just logged in, right? So I can need to pass this cookies. So this is our login. I will just duplicate this request. And let's say get all users. And my API URL will be uh, auth login. What will be the API URL for this? Go to the router and try to understand. API and there will be a users. Instead of auth, we can just do API users. And that will be get. So get delete patch. Right? This will be a simple get. And then you need to pass these cookies. Which you just received from the login. Okay. This is the cookies we have received. The name of the cookies is auth cookies. So we got the cookies uh, while doing a simple login. So this is the login we were doing and password hello hello one. If you remember, I just need to correct this path API auth login. I don't remember what I entered. So I will just do the register again. And I will enter email and the password. gmail.com the password is one one what uh, happened is it giving some errors okay i need to api auth register api auth login 3002 i don't know while closing this insomnia something happened so this is the cookies right f1a6 this is how it it manages all these things f1a6 so cookies are managed and if i try to do api users what it will do is it will send these cookies so you can set that in the headers check that in the header headers like what all things are being passed in the headers so here is the request and you can see in this this is what you are requesting and i can see in the cookies i'm sending auth uh, cookies and this is the response i got status code 200 and this is my response object and i'm also logging the cookies in the from the middleware okay this is the cookies i am receiving so everything is correct i got the user object here you can also print the uh, user object for just for the demo but don't log it on the console and here i will just try to send it and you can see this user object is being printed right that means user exists and this session id exists in the database and now we can log in and whenever you do the login this session id will be expired right because we are storing this session id every time so if I do the login, currently this uh, cookies is getting updated through the this client insomnia. So whenever you do the get login, it will send the updated cookies, which is 998, right? So if you do the login, what is the cookies you received? 2D4, right? And if I do this, it is sending this cookies as a 2D4. Yes, but the previous cookies or previous session ID is now expired because that doesn't exist in the database. So this is like a secured mechanism of uh, building authentication. You can use a build authentication service by using express sessions, using cookie based authentication, using token based authentication. There are thousand different ways of uh, building a simple authentication. I talked about this demo example to just help you learn or build a simple authentication service. Authentication express TypeScript APIs. Now you can add uh, e-commerce app, whatever the APIs you wanted to add on top of it. So I think I hope you like it and that's all we have in this video. Thanks everyone.